Welcome back to Can Your Brain Compile Java? So last time we played with the core language and this time we're going to play with arrays and lists. And I promise again no syntax errors and if you don't know what this means, maybe you should go watch the first video again. Okay, so here's the first code snippet for you. And this time uh, all the options are about errors. So I promise that uh, <laughs> there's an error in this program. Maybe it's a compile time error, maybe it's a runtime error. So what uh, do we do here? We create uh, an array of strings, one, two, three, then we assign it to an array of objects and then we store uh, a number in the, in the array. So there's uh, something fishy going on here. Maybe you should um, pause the video and think about uh, will the error be in line eight or will the error be in line nine? And will it be a compile time error or will it be a runtime error? Okay, pause the video now. Okay, so the solution is you will get a runtime error in line nine. So why is this the case? Um, so this string array, which is lying on the heap somewhere, is referenced by this variable uh, with the static type string array and then um, also by this variable uh, of static type object array. Okay, and then the compiler will allow to store the number one in an apparently object array because uh, one is an int, int can be boxed to integer and integer is an object. But then uh, the runtime says, wait a minute, we really have a string array at runtime, right? So we can't just put a number in here and you get an array store exception. So each time you try to store something in an array, the runtime has to perform a, a type check, a dynamic type check at runtime, basically, unless you have an array of primitives. Okay, um, so why is Java designed this way? Um, well, this line is allowed because it is sometimes very useful to be able to abstract uh, over arrays of different element types. Maybe you want to write a method that prints out all the elements of an array. Then it would be useful to treat all um, arrays as arrays of object. Quite useful. But then <laughs> you have these corner cases which don't work. So, okay. Good, so on to the next snippet. This is very similar, but now I use lists instead of arrays. So uh, here I create a list with, again, the elements one, two, three. Uh, there's a useful helper method that converts this into a list. Um, right, so I have a list of string. Then I do uh, a similar assignment. Now I want to abstract uh, over the element type. I don't really care what it is. Let's just treat it as objects. And then uh, slightly different syntax to change an element. I want to set the first element at index zero to the int to the integer uh, one, which, which is an object again, because integers are objects. Okay, so similar question, but <laughs> due to the imports now, uh, th those are not lines eight and nine, but 11 and 12. Um, so is the error in line 11 or is it in line 12? Or, and is it a compile time error or runtime error? Pause the video and think about it. Okay, so the solution is different this time. The compiler does not allow this assignment. So if you have a list of string, you can't assign it to a variable of type um, list of object. So a list of string is not a list of object. This is uh, somewhat counterintuitive if you first uh, see this because the intuition is, well, if I have multiple strings, why can't I treat them as multiple objects? every string is an object, why doesn't this also work for lists? Well, the problem is it would work for, for just reading from a list, right? If you just uh, pick out elements, no problem. But here we're trying to, to modify the list. We, we try to put something into the list and this is not type safe as we saw earlier. So the compiler um, already forbids this assignment. So the, the type system is a bit stronger here. Okay, so this problem cannot even surface at runtime because uh, it's already caught at compile time here, if you will. 
So if you want to abstract over the um, uh, element type, maybe you just want to print out all the elements, then you would put simply a question mark here. List of question mark is a super type of all lists you can imagine, basically. But that's a very complicated topic. OK. OK, on to the next snippet. Now we have uh, a problem that we're going to develop over the next 10 slides or so. So this is a, a, a larger um, example. Let me let me go over it quickly. So I'm trying to implement my own hash set. I don't know if you've ever done this. This is a very common exercise for students. So uh, the basic idea of a hash set is um, we want to be faster than lists for determining if an element is in the set or not. So instead of just a single list, we're going to use multiple lists, an, an array of lists, basically. OK, and we want to be able to uh, go to the uh, correct list in a very efficient way. But that's not part of this <laughs> puzzler. This is not the complete code. <laughs> OK, so we have an array of lists. And then um, here we here we created the here, here we create uh, the array. Then we have um, a method that basically prints all the elements to the console. So we have a for each loop that iterates over the array. Then we have a for each loop that iterates over um, every list in the array, and then we just uh, print the string to the console. Okay. And um, now you have five different options to choose from. So I promise that in one of these five lines, you will have either a compile time error or a runtime error or a logic error. So this means the compiler won't accept your program. You can't even run it. This means you get an exception at runtime. And this means um, the program runs and finishes normally, but you don't get the output or the effect that you would expect. Okay. So uh, pause the video maybe for a couple of minutes to digest this code and think about what the correct uh, answer would be. OK, so the answer is this line won't compile. OK, so what are we trying to do here? We're trying to create an array of size 10, but that's not important here. We're, we're trying to create an array with the element type list of string. And we already saw in the first puzzler that arrays know their element type at runtime because they have to do these uh, type checks at runtime, right? So it, um, at the point where you uh, create an array, the element type is stored as part of the metadata of the error. So the, the 10 is stored as the length. You can access, this, access it with dot length. And the element type is also stored because the runtime has to do these checks. It has to perform these type checks at runtime. OK, um, but the problem is list of string does not exist at runtime. Um, generics are a pure compile time feature of Java. They are completely erased by the compiler. So they are helpful for catching uh, compile time type errors, but they are not available at, at runtime. So at runtime, you, you can have an array of lists, but you can't have an array of list of string. OK, <laughs> so if you if you look into into the bytecode, for example, um, here, or if you use reflection, you will see that the type of buckets is array of list. Array of list of string is uh, uh, not a concept that's known to, to the Java runtime. Right? Generics only exist at compile time. This leads to uh, a surprising number of corner cases in the Java language. OK, so this doesn't work. So how, how do we fix this? I really I, I really need an array of list of strings. What do I do? Um, I simply create an array of lists. And then I, um, <laughs> I say to the compiler, please uh, believe me that uh, for the purposes of this program, uh, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I know that, that I'm going to treat it as a list of a string, an, an array of that. Um, and you will normally get a warning in Eclipse, hey, this is not type safe, blah, blah, blah. So we suppress this warning. This is a very, I don't know, raw method for fixing this problem. Maybe you know of a better one. This is the only one I, I have seen in the last couple of years. 
So um, no generic type here, just a, just a raw type, and then a typecast to the type that we really need. Okay, so now again, same, same uh, question. The other lines are the same as they used to be. We just fixed this line. Which of these five lines is problematic? Uh, now is the time to pause the video. Okay, so what is the problem? The problem is that we're trying to iterate over a null reference. <laughs> so uh, this for each loop um, iterates over this array, but there, there are no lists in this array. There are only null references in this array. So if you say, um, I want an array of length 10 with the element type list, then all you're gonna get is 10 null references. Right? Java won't create lists for you. Uh, if you, if you uh, want to create lists, you have to create them yourself. This just creates 10 null references. Okay, so we, we can't iterate over null references, right? So here we pick the first null reference from the 10 null references, and then we can't iterate over that. Right, so we have, we have to create the lists. Okay, so how, how do we do that? Right, just a loop, right? I, I, um, I pick this for each loop and um, I create a new list each time. So now I should have fixed the problem. Okay, um, right, again, five lines, which could be problematic. Pause the video and think about which of these lines is problematic. Okay, what's the answer? So, <laughs> yeah. Every programmer knows, every Java programmer knows that you can't instantiate lists. List is an interface, uh, you can't instantiate interfaces. List is an interface, not a class, and you can't uh, create an object of an interface. This simply doesn't work. Wouldn't make sense if it worked. Uh, there would be no code to execute later on the list. So new list doesn't work, right? We have to pick a particular implementation of list, maybe array list or any other kind of list. I always prefer array list. Uh, it's simple and everybody understands it. So let's fix it. Now we create array lists in instead of lists. Um, okay, and same question. Now that we have fixed this line, uh, which of these five lines is problematic? Right, and the answer is, again, we get a null pointer exception. So even though uh, we introduced this for loop, we still have 10 null references in the array. Again, this can be surprising if you first encounter this. So um, let me try to explain. What is the meaning of the for each loop? The meaning of the for each loop is, right, I want to iterate over this array. In this case, it's an array. So dear Java, please um, copy the first element of this array into a new local variable of type list of string named bucket. So bucket is a copy of the first reference in the array. Um, and then I change this local copy. And then the local copy goes out of scope. And then I say, please pick the second null reference from the array, uh, copy it into the local variable bucket, and then uh, change the local variable and then it goes out of scope and and uh, and so on and so on for all 10 null references. So the for each loop can be used to call mutating methods on objects that are already referenced by the array cells, but you can't use the for each loop to um, mutate the array cells themselves, right? If you want to assign to the array cell, cells, here's an assignment, um, this doesn't work with the for each loop. You only assign to a local copy. Okay, so re you really need to understand the difference between variables, references, and objects, or, other or otherwise you will be very puzzled why this assignment won't have any effect, any visible effect on your program. Okay, so how do we mutate the uh, original cells inside the array? If we can't do it with a for each loop, we just use a, a traditional for loop, right? So here's a traditional for loop, uh, starting at zero, all indices smaller than 10 and increment by one. 
you've written this a million times. And then uh, this variable buckets at e uh, at i is the original array cell. It's not a copy. So this assignment will have an effect. Okay, and there's no, <laughs> uh, no task for you to do here, nothing written here. This is just to explain how you would do it. Okay, now the, prob uh, the program does uh, what we expect it to do. Okay, so what lessons have we learned? Uh, type system lesson number one, arrays are covariant. Covariant simply means a string array is an object array. Okay. So you can always write a method that takes an object array and pass it a string array. This will uh, compile. You can read from the, uh, from the object array, but if you try to write something into it, which is not a string, you'll get a runtime error, array store exception. Okay, then uh, type system lesson number two, lists are invariant. So list of string is not a subtype of list of object. So if you want to write a method that can um, read from any list. You don't write list of object, you write list of question mark. Okay, generic arrays cannot be created. So you probably never have to do this if you refrain from using arrays. Just just use lists, right? If, if we had used a list of lists uh, for our um, hash set, we wouldn't have run into this problem. Okay, this won't compile. Okay, um, new list of size n uh, doesn't create any lists. This is also a trap uh, I see beginners falling into again and again and again because new list uh, looks like you're creating lists, but the new um, really means a new array, a new array of size n and element type list. Not a single list is created. Okay, um, and we just saw the for each loop cannot mutate the cells of an array, right? So if you if you want to initialize an array of references, you have to do it with the uh, normal for loop with indices. Okay, that's already all I've got for you today. I hope you had fun and see you next time.